Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. You know, I've been thinking a lot about what this channel is going to be and I've come to a conclusion that it needs to be one thing and one thing only and it should just cover the things that I am either A, designing, doing, making, or learning. It's just there's so many of those elements in my life that I think I'm just going to capture them. If you guys out there enjoy them, great. If not, great. Okay, so I've got a project today that I've been putting off for a while, but I've been wanting to do. And it revolves around this computer behind me. Um, I do a lot of work in design, in CAD, and my systems have been upgrading since a long time ago. And when I say a long time ago, all the way back to the first PC that I built in high school. But there are some things that have stayed legacy that I've kept for a long time. And it just never changed. And one of those things is my giant ATX, full ATX tower that I've got. Really great tower. I love it. But I think it's time for a makeover. A redo, if you want to call it that. Oh, so why? Um, I love performance over aesthetics. I'm not a very, especially when it comes to computational things, like a tool behind me that I use to do work and to make things and to design things. I don't need it to look nice. It actually just sits underneath the table. I don't even look at it. But it it doesn't work very well. Um, it's a high flow case, but like I've tacked on as many fans as I can and the temperatures still get really hot. And part of the reason why is because I have two graphics cards, uh, 1080 Ti's are both generating a ton of heat and it just, it doesn't work. So I'm gonna design something. I'm gonna, I'm gonna replace it with something that is a little bit more compact um, that I can take into the garage whenever I want to blow all the dust out because you should. Anyone that tells you that you shouldn't or don't do it, do it, it's good. It increases performance. And yet it still gives me the performance that I need. Um, I'm thinking, I'm leaning towards at least, that this is an open bench type of setup. But I don't really want an open bench, but I'm pretty sure I'll end up like it, because that's kind of what I've got in my mind. And then everything else will be a design and fabrication. So a big part of design is understanding who you're designing for, and in this case, <laughs> one person, me. And I'll put it out there, if people want it, people will like it, they can fabricate their own. And I'm thinking the tools that I will use is going to probably be a combination of 3D printing, laser cutters. I'm not sure if I'll involve a CNC this time. We'll see. And maybe a lathe, a uh, metal lathe, so I can get some things uh, fabricated that way that I need, um, that I can't find. So, first things first then. I need to pull dimensions from the components. So a component is uh, my old board. There are mounting holes that are built into these motherboards that go into the cases and they're fairly standard at this point. They don't change. This is what is called an ATX board um, for those that don't know. And the holes are all predetermined. It's a standard that everyone in the industry uses. So I'm pretty sure I can just find that. I'm going to Google it. I don't think I'm going to pull dimensions off this board. So I got to do that for the motherboard, the power supply, the fans, the radiator. And I think at that point, I can throw it all into CAD, do a mock-up, and we can actually start designing the actual frame or the case in this case for my new computer tower. So first things first then, dimensions. I'm going to reference what I have outside of the case. My computer, as you can see, is running. So there are components in the case that I can't pull and I do not want to go and do that right now. It's just, we'll see if we can find it. And then, yeah, we'll cat everything. We'll put that into into SolidWorks, which is what the, the design software that I like to use. I'm quite fluent with it. And yeah, it'll give me a visual for what it looks like. And then from there, all dimensions will be there for me to fabricate everything else that will be original to the case. So, Google time.
Okay. Okay. That was a little too easy. Again, uh, it's easy because all these dimensions are standardized and I'm not making these things up. So I got everything I need. Motherboard, power supply, radiator fans. I'm going to just translate this into SolidWorks as mockups. I'm not going to do dimension accurate parts short of the actual physical box dimension of everything. So like I'm not going to design the shroud as you see on the 1080 Ti that I have. It's just going to be a square box with mounting holes, singles for the radiator, singles for the fans. And then like the motherboard will just have its dimension and then all the mounting hole dimensions. I'm not going to model any of these heat sinks and slots. It's just not needed for the purpose. Okay. I'm going to do that. I'm going to make the mocks. It should only take a couple minutes. And then we can start playing around with the layout. And then what I think I'll do is I'll make a screen overlay of everything that I'm doing and kind of show you my thinking process through the design of which the end result is going to be fabricated. I'm actually quite excited for this. I've actually put this project off for about two years. I don't know why I did that, but without further ado, I suppose, let's jump right in. All right, it's been a day and all the mocks for all the components are done. I'm not going to double check them. Uh, part of it is because all the schematics came from manufacturers, so I'm just going to assume that those are correct. So we're now going to go on to the next phase of this project. The funnest part of this project with it, you know what, the funnest part of all design projects, really, right? It's where we move from all the constraints, which is all the components that we needed to while creating something original of our own. And I can break that down into really two components, the roughing stage and then the refining stage. Don't really get into the refining stage until you're done the roughing stage. So this will require some work. There's a lot of trial and error just to figure out what you are looking for in terms of shape over ergonomics and overall just what you're looking for. And then from there, we refine it down to how we want it to look in the final product. This process is done for every product that's out there. I mean, surely I know that there are some companies out there and people that will do the refining and roughing phase all at the same time. But it makes for a really rough time when you're going through iterations after iterations because you're spending a lot of time doing the refining when it's not quite needed yet. So I'm going to start doing some of my design stuff and then probably go through a couple of ideas that I have. That's what the roughing stage is for. And then once I'm happy with roughly about what everything's going to look like and how everything's going to function, I'll come back show you guys what I've done and then I'll go from there to doing all the refinements. All right, I think the design's done. Behind me is, I believe, both a rough and a decently good state product for me to make. I originally thought that this was going to be more of a rough and refined type of process, but as I was designing this, I realized I wanted to keep it simple, something that I could manufacture with most of the technology that I had access to, which is laser cutter, 3D printer, and maybe a bit of manual lathe work for at least aluminum rods that I need, but I didn't really need to do all that much refinement. I think what was interesting was that as I was designing this particular case bench, was that I kind of came full circle. You know, the problems that I had with the case that I have now would have been the case if I had created a open bench that was vertically oriented, which I wanted to do at the beginning. But as I was designing, I realized that that wasn't what I wanted. And so I tweaked it and I tweaked it and I tweaked it and I ended up just building a horizontal bench. But it had all the elements that I wanted to, the expandability, the uh, modularity, um, and one thing that was quite important to me, this computer is going to not be sitting under my table anymore because it's mostly open. I have a dog. Uh, and, and so it needed to be neat. 
to a certain degree. I don't want to just have an open bench that was open for the sake of, well, heat dissipation, but it needed to have some form of wire management because I'm going to see it somewhat. So, well, here we are. This is the design, I guess. Let me show you guys because I think it's pretty awesome. Um, I'm pretty sure there are other products already out there that is very similar that I can buy for say $300, but that defeats the purpose. You make something to be, you know, to, to, to get to a specific type of fit and form for you, I guess in this case for me. And I'm pretty happy with this. So I will show you, uh, I'll kind of switch over to um, a kind of on-screen cap, but I'll show you kind of what I did, kind of explain through some of the logic behind it, and then We'll fabricate this, put all the parts together, and then we'll swap in the parts to see if everything fits. I hope it does. Here's the general design. It's an open bench. You know, when I first designed this, I had designed this thing to stand in a vertical orientation, something like this power supply in the back, no different than how you would see it, but instead on the bottom side. And the way that I looked at this is, my case is already a fairly high flow case. And one of the issues that I had was the two graphics cards. The top one always ran extra hot. And when I say extra hot, like 10 degrees hotter. And fair enough, right? it's a triple fan design, it recirculates the heat and it isn't a blower fan design where it would send that air out the back of the case. So instead it just got trapped in the middle. So that wasn't something that I wanted, right? The whole purpose was to get performance and um, get this thing to a place where I could maybe make this a little bit more modular so I can move things around. The, the, the radiator doesn't have to sit in the front of the case, it can sit on the side of the case, or I guess in this case the top of the case but like just didn't make sense N none of the things that I did with regards to having this thing sitting in a vertical orientation made any sense to me so here we are at this design where it sets horizontally uh, or I guess laying down power supply in the back and I built this tray I have a motherboard that can take an m.2 SSD I just don't have one. I've never been upgraded to it. And for those of you wondering why I need two graphics cards, really I just need one. Uh, the second one, the second one I bought as an experiment to get into cryptocurrency. Yes, yes I know, it probably contributed to the graphics card shortage and the price increase, but I didn't want to use my main workhorse graphics card for that. And I did for a while run this thing on in SLI. Uh, for any graphic intensive things that I needed. So the dimensions of this tray utilizes a prefabricated tray that my original case came with. And how this case is designed is that it has these, I'm going to call it 3D printers, 3D printed spacers on the side that I'm going to insert brass inserts into. And they act as expansion slots for well any additional fan that I want to add or any additional modules that I want to add. It's a pretty standard bench, right? Bench, open bench type of system. And then I've got this panel in the front that just covers everything. And I wish my computer components didn't have RGB LEDs, but I'm pretty sure these two graphics cards does. And everything else just won't light up. I'm aiming for quarter inch plexiglass or acrylic in this case for the top and bottom plates. And then these four legs, and then there's one in the back. I intend to lathe those out of, well, aluminum. And we'll see how they turn out. If they don't turn out great, I may just 3D print them, call it a day. But yeah, it's a pretty simple build. My power supply is modular, so I can only I, I can plug in as many components as I want. Um, 
and I will probably use the existing cables that's there. I'm not going to go and get individual sleeved ones. I'm pretty sure that will look pretty nice. Maybe I would. I'm not 100% sure yet. I've got these pass-throughs for any 24-pin power or any of the powers that I need to go to the, to the actual power supplies. And there's a cutout up here for the 6-pin. I think the only thing that I don't have dimensions to, which I couldn't find online, is the actual GPU brackets that would go into, I would say, the, the graphics card slots or the PCI Express slots in the back. Those, I think, are pretty standardized, but I couldn't, I couldn't find a single dimension on them. And the only way that I could find them is if I took out my graphics cards, in which then I wouldn't be able to use my computer. So uh, there's that. My plan with that, or at least to address that, because these graphics cards are going to be pretty floppy in the in just the PCIe slots, is once I take them out, uh, I will probably utilize three or two of these three mounting brackets to make a fixture, a custom fixture that will just go directly to uh, the graphics card, and then we'll anchor them down with thumb screws on the top. Having said that, though, I did find a fairly interesting like a pre-fat up some through online that I can get. I think they're like 16 millimeters long and they're M3s. So I'm just going to pick up a couple and they'll just be slotted into these. <laughs> I guess waiting for a use case in the future. Yeah, no, I'm pretty happy with this. My thought is maybe some of the cables can be tucked into the plexiglass or the click window, but maybe not. Maybe I'll just bundle them up pretty neatly down here. Call a day. SATA cables come up. Uh, in through here, and then eventually, actually I didn't design for it, um, but eventually my plan is to design a power button. Uh, I don't think my motherboard has a on-off button, that it's pre-built onto it, but if it did then that's great, otherwise I have to build a on off switch location which will probably be somewhere here is my guess or it could be anywhere really it doesn't really matter all that much okay uh we got to laser cut these two pieces and this front plate here for covering up all the wiring mess that will be there and then we have to 3d print let's see one two three four five six seven eight of these standoffs I'm going to call them that and then two of the smaller ones. I got to press brass fittings into all of these through a soldering iron and then we got to laser cut uh, these two brackets one for the radiator and then one for the power supply. This is going to take a couple days of fabrication. Uh, the legs are pretty quick to do. Um, they'll be like a couple of minutes each. The 3D printing stuff I'm pretty sure I can get all these brackets here done up uh, in a day or so. And then this guy will probably take a couple of hours. Once that's done, we'll do some movie magic. Everything will pop on the table. And we'll get to the races. I'm pretty excited. I really want to get this thing done because I, I want to get rid of that temperature, temperature differential that, that's between the two cards. And then I, I want to get my radiator which is currently pushing hot air into my case uh to be dumping that air somewhere else and so yeah and then i get access to all of my components my ram i can add more ram into the system and this thing is going to be so compact it's going to be great um yeah to fabrication we go hey guys it's now been a couple of days we got most materials parts mostly completed and I just want to recap what exactly did we use and how did we build these parts there's a laser cutter a metal lathe and 3d printers for most of everything we then also use a solder and iron to press in some brass fittings inserts into the 3d printer components so that they're more reliable than just tapping right into the parts but I'll show you in a bit this project wasn't difficult Majority of the difficulty was actually getting the components or finding the time to go and get the components before the shops closed. Everything else was automated. And with a project like this, where I used a lot of things that I found on the computer, 
it was paramount for me to make sure that the parts fit. The best part about doing that is I ensure all the holes are in the right places, not with the materials that I bought, but with some sacrificial stuff. I do that a lot with the design. It's just templating, making sure that outside components that I found actually will fit. In this case, cardboard. There is no point in cutting this out of acrylic, which cost it somewhat like $40, when this did the job perfectly fine. And the thing is, all these templates, the thing with all these templates is that I found a mistake. You see, there is a lot of holes on here. And where was it? This hole. In the wrong place. Why? Well, I made a mistake. And when I read the dimensions, I had referenced that hole off the wrong surface, making it exactly 10 millimeters short. This saved me from going and buying another sheet of acrylic. I mean, great practice for something that is so important. Okay, I'm gonna put the camera on. I'm gonna throw all these parts together. We machined some aluminum feet. Simple design with a single M3 tapped hole on the back. And this is what I'm talking about. A 3D printed part. Brass inserts. Because I don't ever really like tapping directly into plastic. Something just feels wrong about that. And these work so, so well. Uh, for what it is, why would you do it any other way? And then we have to peel off all the skin from these laser cut pieces. This is the radiator mount. And then we have these pieces. You see all these circles? Yeah. Now those are all the holes that I needed to countersink. Um, there was a lot of them. So this skin needs to come off too. And then we can get into actually doing the assembly. Let's go.
it's done. I am pretty happy with the way that this system now looks. I didn't do any b-rolls of me doing disassembly of my old computer because, well, why? There's millions of videos out on the internet of how to put computers together, but disassembly was quick. There was a lot of dust, so I had to clean them off, but once that was done, reassembly was, well, just everything in reverse, right? In this case, well, bench covered for everything that I needed. Uh, the expansion ports on the side, the uh, the fact that it's nice and clean and has this front plate that I painted <laughs> bronze uh, to give it a frosted look. And having gone with this frosted acrylic was one of the best things. I was originally going to go with clear acrylic, but the fingerprints that this thing hides is phenomenal. There's a couple of things, however, that isn't complete with this system. And I mean, it's right there. It looks like a UFO. Um, with all the lighting that it has. When I built this case, I couldn't find, for the life of me, any dimensions that pertain to the back bracket of the GPU. You know, the metal part that goes onto the case that you screw down normally? Yeah, that dimension just doesn't exist on the internet. So the original design on CAD for the acrylic pieces did not account for that. And I knew that. Uh, I needed to pull that dimension once it was outside of the case in the current state. And then the second, is unlike my original board uh, or my I guess my old motherboard that I showed as a prop kind of early on in the video that actually had a power and a reset button on the motherboard this board didn't have one so as it is right now I have the power switch that was from my tower connected onto the power switch port I guess the pins of this uh, current setup I have ordered a power switch and a reset switch and I've also ordered two gen 3.1 USB headers I'm gonna call it that uh, that I will be putting on because I also lost all of my front panel IO on my case I didn't design for them in this particular build however I did account for the expandability of this system all those little holes with brass inserts on the side yeah, they're for mounting future things that I would bolt on. Fans, power buttons, USB headers, etc. It's expandable. That's what I love about it. And I'm pretty happy <laughs> with this. Um, I achieved my goal. I've been running this system now actually for like four days. And it's cold. it runs cooler. It means that the fans run lower RPM. And... Like when I say cooler, like four, five, six degrees cooler uh, relative to what it was before. That was the objective. And it achieved that <laughs> pretty well. I also did go into this design with the intention and knowing that I was designing for me. And I went into this knowing I wanted a bench style system set up, which I... <laughs> I'm not quite sure I want that in the background of my shots. So maybe I'll lower this a little bit into the bottom of the table. I don't know. Not quite liking the way that it looks. Uh, but I don't know. Tell me, should I leave it there? It obviously works as a background prop, I, I guess. I'm not one for RGB lighting. What I didn't understand about this board is that it also had RGB lighting on the bottom. You see that red glow that is blinking? Didn't know that it was there. Couldn't see it when it was in my case. But now with the frosted acrylic, it pulsates every like 10 seconds. <laughs> I don't know. I'm enjoying this case a lot, obviously. And... Uh, I will probably do an upgrade once the buttons get here. They're not going to get here until January. I mean, talk about COVID supply chains, right? Like crazy. So it ain't going to come here until January. And same goes for the USB 3.1 header. So I can't even design for those until they get here. But once they do, we'll probably see another, I guess, update from me on this. And let me know. Do you guys enjoy these kind of design-centric videos? Because I'm going to build my whole entire channel off of that, right? Uh, I love design. I do design just on my off hours. 
And a lot of it is this process that you saw here, uh, <laughs> significantly more extended, of course. And maybe I'll go into other things. Like there's a whole bunch of other things that I'm interested in uh, that I would love to show you guys, all of which have some design elements, um, whether that be designing systems or designing parts, and just would love to share with you guys. So this is just one of them. And the best part about design, it isn't just limited to computer towers or cases. It literally applies to everything. So if this is of interest, I hope you join me. I'm gonna call this project a wrap for now until all the other parts come. So I guess look out for that when it uh, arrives. But for now, I'm gonna call this project done. If you liked what you saw here, subscribe if you will, hit that notification bell. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.